This is where our journey starts, at some aquatic habitat where fish are cultured, like these ponds. The fish farmer alerts us about a problem that he finds in his fish, he finds a certain pathology, and we check whether this is related to mixozoans. Mixozoans are multicellular parasites and they are closely related to the cnidarians, that is to say to jellyfish and uh, we can still see the relation to the jellyfish because they possess something that is called polar capsules and that is the equivalent to uh, the jellyfish nematocysts. These are the stinging cells that you experience when you get in contact with jellyfish. The mixozoan life cycle has long been a big puzzle and only in the 1980s it was discovered that uh, the mixozoan life cycle involves a vertebrate host, which is usually a teleost fish, and invertebrate hosts, which uh, are either bryozoans or polychaetes and oligochaetes. Um, the invertebrate host thereby functions as the definitive host in the life cycle. This is the host in which uh, the sexual maturation takes place. So I am taking you now to our animal facility. This is where we maintain all our aquatic animals in small aquaria. And what we do here is um, we maintain stock. That means we maintain fish that are free of infection and uh, of different age classes to be infected. And at the same time, we have our experiments here. In this aquarium, we have a setup where we have a small cage that has holes which the spores can go through, but the fish cannot, and obviously also the invertebrate host cannot because they sit in the sediment. Uh, the sediment is underneath this small cage and our fish, this is experimental carp, they are in this cage. But there are worms in the sediment and um, these worms are releasing spores. We've separated them out uh, in our cell well system and selected them for a single species of parasite. Oligochaetes are small segmented worms that live in the sediment. The fish host needs to produce an infective stage of transmission that can uh, endure the conditions in the open water and then infect invertebrate oligochaetes. We isolate them individually because uh, like this we can check which individual is infected and we can collect the spores that are produced by an individual and then um, use this for DNA extraction and determine what species it is that we have there. And in this system we can at any time we wish to take fish or take worms out so we know exactly in the fish, for example, we are now at day three of infection, the third day after we've put the fish into the cage, and we can check where the parasite has migrated to. Bryozoans are so-called moss animals, they're colonial animals. 
So in this um, small aquaria that are covered are the bright zones. They don't like to be very much exposed to the light and they sit here in the petal dishes. You can see bits of bryozoan colonies here. The parasites can also invade these and form spores that will infect again a fish host. At the moment we are working predominantly with two fish species. Uh, one is goldfish and the other one is carp. This size of carp is uh, the size of carp that is affected by swim bladder inflammation, which is a disease related to mixozoans. Um, in the goldfish, we work on another species that causes the so-called kidney enlargement disease, also caused by mixozoans. So we use also this juvenile fish, small fish, for our experimental exposures because if they are slightly immuno-incompetent, uh, it is easier to get them infected and um, to get the life cycle working. So we have now uh, extracted the DNA uh, from our samples and uh, by which size we can determine if we have one or more species involved. We also make specific primers for all the uh, new species of mixozoans we find. And uh, with these we can obtain a pattern uh, by which we can determine which species is present in which organ of the fish. So once we have uh, the life cycle of the parasite in an aquaria system under controlled conditions, uh, we can also look at the different factors that may influence this life cycle. For example, temperature sp plays a great role in the uh, proliferation rates of the parasite. Uh, you get a lot more parasites at higher temperatures and uh, studying in a controlled system, the number of parasites at each stage uh, allows us to model things such as climate change in a small system. And uh, with this information, we can be prepared and we can maybe predict emerging diseases uh, in larger systems such as ponds or uh, systems of culture fish in the sea. So, and we do this research because um, of the importance of the aquaculture industry and the important damage uh, these parasites cause in the aquaculture industry. Of all the many species we know, only a few are pathogenic, but they cause 100% mortality. And we want to develop antiparasitic strategies and vaccines against these parasites. So that's our uh, big aim.